Law Firm First Floor After finishing today's work, you walk out of the law firm to find the street lights brightly lit. It is already night time. The trees on the sidewalk in the distance are covered in tiny orange lights that look like shining berries. Winter Beach Festival is almost here. You turn around to find Vin leaning against the railing leisurely as he watches you. You wonder how long he's been there. Why didn't you tell me you were coming? You try to think back on what you did before noticing Vin, afraid that you might have looked stupid. Vin takes your shoulder back swiftly and naturally. He then looks at you with a gaze as gentle as the night sky. Do not worry, I did not work which long. How was work today? It was good. What do we do? What do we have planned? You look at the night illuminated by the city's neon lights. You move closer to Vin and wrap your hands around his arm. It seems like there are a good number of couples out at night due to the holidays. I have a restaurant reserved. It is not too far from here. We shall walk there. Restaurant The restaurant has already changed its decorations to welcome the holiday and the atmosphere is filled with festive vibes. The two of you sit not too far from the piano. Yes, happy holidays. These are the menus. Please take a look. A waitress stands by the table with a tree in her hand. Aside from the menus, there are also a pair of holiday-themed rag stockings. The restaurant has prepared a tiny holiday gift for all our guests. You'll be able to find the gift in the stockings. And if you like, you can take the stockings with you. How nice! She gently places the items in the tray onto the table and leaves after nodding to the two of you. You look at the stockings hanging on the side of the table and turn to look at Ben. It feels like people are getting really creative with festival events these past couple of years. Sometimes you'll get stuck if you're not careful. Upon hearing what you said, a playful expression appears on Vin's face. So, does that mean you're stuck on this holiday? Well... Speaking of holiday plans, you think back to the situation a few days ago. Your residence. You're lying on your stomach on your bed and enjoying an arm knitting video. You suddenly receive a call from Kiki. Sharara, did you get the presents yet? Just a friendly reminder, Winter Beach Festival is just around the corner. You won't have enough time to get a present once the holiday, holiday starts. I, I don't know what to get yet. I'm not very good at picking up presents. Hmm, if you're really counting of anything, why don't you just open the shopping app and see what they recommend? The notification algorithms in these apps nowadays are amazing. They might know what you want more than you do. Alright, I'll give it a try. Nice, Kiki. No problem. Alright, I'll let you get back to it. Just calling to remind you. Catch you later. You hang up and open the recommended list that you've never really paid attention to. The first item that shows up takes you by surprise. Super chunky yarn, isn't that? The arm knitting materials from the video you were just watching are first on the recommended list. You feel exposed as if the app saw right through you. Although it's really accurate and recommended according to my preference, it's actually not very fitting. Huh? Come to think of it, Vin seems to be really afraid of the cold. His hands become chilly if there is any sort of wind blowing on him. It is actually perfect for Vin. The more you think about it, the more fitting it is. It is. You please the order and plan to make a blanket for Vin over the break. 
Vince stands in front of you not knowing about any of that. You've decided to weasel your way through the details of your holiday plans. Yeah, I plan on using the break to stay home and try out some crafts that have been really popular lately. You smile and speak with confident short phrases in an attempt to not have to talk about the actual details. I have to keep the details of the craft from Vane. It looks like the chunky yarn has already arrived. I'll be able to work on the blanket for Vin starting tomorrow. Vin's never going to guess what I'm preparing for him. Hmm? I received the chunky yarn that you mailed me. I thought you were planning on making it together. <laughs> Since you are indulging in your little plan, Vin's words catch you completely off guard. I mailed Vince's gift to his place and it was the raw materials boot. <laughs> Saying that you're keeping quiet, Vin raises his brow slightly and has a confused look on his face. Are we not? Yeah, I was planning on making it with you. You simply go along with it as you aren't able to come up with a better answer. I need to get another gift for Vin, but what should I get? Will I even make it in time? A look of realization appears on Vin's face after hearing your response. I see. Vin's response feels open-ended. You look at Vin confused. He smiles gently and begins to explain. I actually was expecting a response when I asked you about your holiday plans. Was it to do a cross together? Vin shakes his head and looks at you with a strong gaze. You feel as if Vin is looking right through you. The response I had expected was that you would prepare a present for me. My assistant has been frustrated about what Winter Wish gives to get, so I went ahead and took into some Winter Wish festival events. I found out that Sally's had picked up the tradition of giving each other gifts for the Winter Wish festival in recent years. On the Day of Miracles, give a carefully considered present to your loved one to be blessed with success in both of your endeavors. After learning of the values behind it, I began to have anticipations of my own. Vin, are you interested in the gift exchange event? Vin looks at you with a chin resting on his hand and smiles. Yes, I am very interested. I have not had the opportunity to do something similar in the past. This year, I would like to do something new with you. It turns out Vin has the same idea in mind as you. A sudden feeling of encouragement takes it over you. Then let's use the bridge to prepare our presents and open them on Winter Wish. Okay, so tomorrow? We'll be making the presents together. Vin's residence. Vin has just woken up when you arrive at his house. He puts down the cup of tea in his hand as he sees you. I wanted to do some early preparation yesterday and organize the package. There are more materials here than I thought. What are you planning to make? Vin's tone is as gentle as ever. However, his question makes you feel somewhat insecure. I'm thinking about... If I tell him the truth about making a blanket and sending the package to his house on top of that, wouldn't my plan to make a present for Vin be completely exposed and tarnished? I really would prefer it if he didn't know about the dumb things I did. There must be something about the holidays that I can seg segue into. Thoughts run quickly through your mind and you re are reminded of the present you received at the restaurant yesterday. You immediately begin to speak to prevent things from getting awkward. 
I'm thinking about making stockings. Vin looks a little surprised at your response. He gazes at you with a confused look. Stockings? Vin definitely sees through your lie. You suddenly realize that the chunky yarn for making the blanket is as thick as yours. Wait, there's still a room for explanation? <laughs> uh, you know, stockings to put presents in. We can't put the present we're preparing for each other in the stockings. That's why the chunky yarn is slightly thicker. It wouldn't hurt to make it bigger. Vin looks at you in silence. He then smiles and points upstairs without questioning your, you further. In that case, come with me to the bedroom. The materials are there. Okay. Vin's bedroom. The warm sunlight shines through the tall European style windows and onto the chunky yarn on the floor. The balls of chunky yarns are piled in front of the white grand piano, taking up nearly all the space there is. How is there so much? Take my hand and watch your step. Vin extends his hand to reach you and guides you around the colorful walls of chunky yarn and on the floor. The two of you find a place near the piano to sit down. There is a small projected screen on a small tripod not too far from you. What is that? I thought we might need some references as we move along, so I found some knitting tutorials beforehand. I have never heard of arm knitting. It's quite interesting. Did you already learn how to do it through the tutorials? Vin shakes his head helplessly. He picks up a green ball of chunky yarn, gorges the leg, and attempts to wrap a circle around his wrist. Although the knitting techniques in the tutorials are not too complicated, I would not consider myself familiar with those techniques since I have not tried them myself. I will probably need your help if I am the one doing the knitting. Vin looks up at you. The reflection of the sunlight in his eyes makes them look more, even more transparent than before. It's as if you can see into the deepest parts with just a single glance. You suddenly have the urge to see Vin knit. Then I'll assist you on the side. You tap, on, you tap on the projector screen and find a stocking knitting tutorial. You change the playback, playback speed to the slowest option and press play. Vin imitates the movements in the video and weaves his arms within the circles of chunky yarn, successfully making the first ring of chunky yarn on his arm. After the first ring is done, the tutorial continues to knit with a different colored chunky yarn. You find a ball of red chunky yarn and give it to Vin. Why don't we try green with red, like the stockings we saw at the restaurant yesterday? It's really festive. Vin takes the chunky yarn from your hand and wraps it around his wrist with the same technique. Suddenly, he stops. The disconnected thread falls off the ball of chunky yarn and sways mischievously in Vin's hand. Vin's movements are disrupted by it. He squeezes the ball of chunky yarn subconsciously with a puzzled look on his face. It fell off. I am unable to move right now. I may need your help. The sunlight is perfect. It shines upon Vin's light hair enveloping it in a halo that makes it look, look soft and fluffy. The halo is projected into Vin's eyes, illuminating the slight uncertainty in his eyes. You can't help but reach out to touch the ends of his hair. Vin looks up at you and remains quiet. You can't put a finger on it, but you feel that he's giving off a helpless and obedient vibe. He's like a kitten stuck in a pile of yarn seeking help from the owner. What do you need me to do? Maybe we can keep the yarn and shorten the part that was safe. This way, we can have more for later parts. 
I'll try. You hold onto Vin's unmovable arm and begin to adjust the yarn. To refrain from troubling Vin, you frequently have to lead the yarn all around Vin to loosen it. Vin stays still as you move the yarn around him. But, uh, Vin, I'm sorry. Coming to your senses, you realize that Vin is covered in yarn right now. It's as if you've just tied him up with yarn of all colors. I don't think I can do it. Fred note, as a part of the Winter Wish Festival event, I find this to be very fun. But however, I believe that rescuing me from the yarn is more important right now. Vin tilts his head and looks at you. He sounds unfazed as if he knew this was going to happen. I leave it in your hands. Vin looks at you with a, such an innocent gaze that your cheeks begin to heat up, saying as you were the one who got him into this mess. I have to find something to take place of your arm to hold the yarn. You hold onto Vin's shoulder to support yourself as you stand up. However, your head accidentally bumps into Vin's glasses along the way. You burst out laughing upon seeing the dumbfounded look on his face, all the tension leaving your body. <laughs> Let me fix it for you. Looking at him up close through his glasses, you realize that both of you are beginning to sweat from all the work. No, I have to find a way. There is a key in the cabinet that should fit your needs. A key isn't enough, is it? We probably need two sewing needles to take place of your arm. Nothing to worry about. With the fallen chunky yarn as an indicator, we will be able to easily tell the difference, uh, difference when we take it off of the kin. You follow Vince's instruction and quickly find the kin. The kin replaces his arm in holding the chunky yarn. Vince's hand is now free. All that's left now is all the chunky yarn that's hanging off of him. Vin, I need you to follow my lead. Okay, what do you need me to do? Vin looks up at you with a surrendered look. Seeing his expression, a tingling feeling runs up your arm and into your heart. Not knowing why, you start to feel nervous. You pinch your palm to dismiss the sudden strange feeling. You try your best to pull the chunky yarn toward you so Vin can remove his hand more easily. His body tilts toward you as you pull. Take your hand out of the ring first, then move it closer to yourself and we'll be able to get the chunky yarn off of you. Vin listens to your directions and removes his hand. He is looking at you with a smile in his eyes. You dare not to look back. Okay, now what do I do? And then, I'll take care of the rest. You lean forward and remove the chunky yarn hanging off of Vin's hair. Vin is finally freed from the binding chunky yarn. However, the progress with the stockings is abysmal. Maybe the videos aren't enough. You might need a professional to help. And the craft studio. An hour ago, you and Vin failed in your attempt to knit but refused to give up. The two of you are now arriving at a proper knitting workshop. The table in the workshop is piled with balls of chunky yarn. You and Vin are sitting by the table and having a great conversation with the owner. What would you guys like to make? We'd like to learn how to knit stockings. The holidays are just around the corner and there are quite a number of couples here to learn to knit stockings. Are you guys also making it to put your presents in? Yes, that is exactly what we are using them for. The owner of the workshop looks at the two of you and shows a thoughtful smile. Young people nowadays are under way too much pressure. Presents meant a lot more to them than to little kids. Many couples like yourselves have come here recently and I've discovered that. 
The people that are stronger and seemingly less in need of attention on the outside yearn for love more than anyone on the inside. Ah, oh, I digress. Why don't we get started? Okay. The owner teaches the two of you how to knit stockings in great detail. It may be that due to Vin's experience with knitting, he's able to learn the techniques much faster than you. He becomes quite the expert on various methods of knitting after learning them only once. Seeing his progress, the owner asks Vin to practice with you while she tends to the other customers. Vin, how do you move on to the next row? You have no reservations since it's Vin that you're asking. You rely on his ability to help you instead of trying to figure out everything out on your own. Stay still, I will teach you. Vin stands behind you and wraps his arms around you to hold your hands. You are enveloped in his scent. He guides your left hand and he uses his finger to wrap the chunky yarn on your right hand onto your left wrist. Another string of chunky yarn passes through his fingers and twists onto your arm, ring after ring. And that is how it is done. You have switched to the next row. You got it? As Vin speaks, his breath grazes past your ear and you feel a tingle running down your fingers. I got it. Try it and show me. Vin holds onto your hand and doesn't let go. This time, you guide him with your hands and repeat what he just taught you. Soon, the second ring is complete. See, I can do it now. I think you should do it again, just to reinforce your memory. Vin traces along the back of your head with his thin and long fingers. He reaches your fingertips and entwines his with yours. You look around feeling embarrassed, hoping that no one is watching. A light chuckle sounds in your ear. Relax, no one is looking at us. You can hear the sound of your rising heart. This moment feels to extend on infinitely. Everything that you see and hear is fumbling in your head. Why did you stop? Are you not going to do it with me again? Only the sound of Vin's voice remains clear to you. Vin, you're so close to me. The excitement brought upon by the rush of dopamine in your head runs rampant within you. You are not sure why you are so nervous or what you are afraid of. You speak with a whisper. You sense the feeling of sudden butterflies and panic in your stomach and chest as if you've returned to the flirtatious period with Vin. Seems like your obsession with Vin remains just as intense after all this time and it may be even more overwhelming at certain times. Why are your ears are so red? Are you feeling uncomfortable? You can feel Vin moving away slightly. No, I'm feeling fine. I just put too many layers of clothes on. Maybe the heater is on too high. Vin observes you carefully. You try your best to hold a natural expression on your face. Not knowing why, you do not want to let Vin know about the thoughts you're having at the moment. The owner shows up just in time to save you. How's everything going? I've got it all down. Already? The owner's suspicions quickly fade as she finds a reason to convince herself. Hmm, looks like both of you are quite talented when it comes to knitting. Those with talent always learn fast. 
Vin turns around and looks at you with a smile on his face. You are immediately reminded of the intimate moment just now and quickly change the subject. Yeah, anyways, thank you. It's about time for us to go. Vin nods at the smiling owner and takes your hand as the two of you leave. The sun is setting by the time you guys exit the workshop. The streets are filled with people enjoying the holiday night. You and Vin join them and stroll slowly hand in hand. A loud cheer sounds from a crowd not too far in the distance. Something seems to be coming toward you and Vin. Something seems to have happened up ahead. Should we go and take a look? Vin shakes his head and holds slightly onto your hand. It might be some kind of an event. It sounds like there are a lot of people there. We could stay here and wait for them to come to us. They are getting closer. Hold on to me and do not get separated. You stand on the sidewalk with Vin. Soon, music begins to sound from the crowd. It's a holiday parade. It's the Winter Witch Festival tour! The crowd begins to close in and Vin wraps his arms tightly around you to protect you. You also wrap your arm around his waist. Every day is a new surprise. The parade is singing loudly as they pass by the two of you. A rain of candy suddenly falls from the sky. You naturally hold up your arms trying to catch the candy being thrown at the two of you. I got it. I also caught one. Vin opens his hand and shows you the candy wrapped in pink in his palm while his other arm continues to hold onto you. I like that flavor. You also open your hand and show him the candy in your palm. It's green. Let's read, what do you see? The two of you hold on to each other in the crowd as you exchange candies. After reading this candy, it will mean that we've been blessed and we'll experience different surprises each day. Okay, I have received the blessing. Vin nods with a gentle smile. The light of the sunset is like falling stars as it reflects off Vin's eyes. Seeing Vin gaze at the candy in his hand, you feel a drop in your heart. You are reminded of Vin's gift. Vin's bedroom After returning to Vin's place, the chunky yarn you left on the ground remains where it was lost. You feel a sense of comfort. The unfinished stocking with the keen sticking out of it is hanging on the rack, waiting for the two of you to return. You look at the part Vince already finished and are reminded of earlier when he taught you how to knit. An idea pops into your mind. Vin, um, why don't I finish the rest of the stockings? Hmm, why do you want to do that all of a sudden? Um, it's just that if it's meant for holding both of our presents, then we should both take part in making it. Okay, then I will be the one to assist you this time. Vin looks at you with a gentle look. This is the look that has supported many of your past decisions without asking any questions. You take a seat on the ground once again and continue to knit with the techniques you learned in the afternoon. Vin sits off to the side and quietly watches you. Vin's attic As the candlelight in the attic sways, you finish knitting the stockings with Vin's help and hang them by the fireplace. I'm looking forward to the gift you prepared for me. Vin whispers suddenly as you two stand side by side to look at the dropped fruits of your labor. It's a secret. But I'm also curious as to what you have prepared for me. Is this just as you see it, a secret? 
as curious as you may be, you do not continue to pursue the topic. After all, a present is meant to be a surprise. After a brief silence, Vin suddenly brings up something else. I will have Oji clean up the chunky yarn in the bedroom. It is getting late. We should get some rest. You don't think too much about it and agree. The ceiling in Vin's bedroom is the first thing you see when you open your eyes. The moon is shining bright. You have no idea how long you slept for. There is no warmth in on the bed beside you. It's a lonesome room. You realize Vin is next to you. Where did he go? The moonlight fills the room and you leave the bedroom to go and find Vin. The second floor is completely dark. You use the wall to guide your way to the stairs and look down with only the moonlight's illumination. Vin isn't there. Then he must be. You climb up to the attic and discover a sliver of light between the door and the door frame. Vin's attic. You gently push open the door and see Vin who has his back against you. He's looking down and knitting a white blanket. The portion that is completely is is complete is hanging over his lap. He seems to be almost finished. You hesitate where you stand and decide to make a sound to get Vin's attention. Vin? Vin's motions come to a stop, then he looks up at you. Not sleeping well? You shake your head and walk over to him. You glance at the blanket he's sitting. You feel like Vin already has an idea about what's going on. What are you doing? Did you not sleep at all? Why are you knitting a blanket? Vin doesn't immediately respond after hearing your series of questions. He looks at you with a gentle smile as if he's thinking you already know the answer. You sighed inside. You knew I was going to make a blanket for you, didn't you? Yes. When did you find out? I vaguely look into it after receiving the package. He knew that early. Vin was aware of what's going on even with your efforts to keep it a secret. Secret, thinking back on what you've done, the feeling of embarrassment envelops you. So, the lies that I put so much effort into, you saw right through them. I was really stupid. Vin smiles and shakes his head. He looks at you with a cherishing gaze. No, the way that you try to cover things up is very cute. You haven't answered me yet. Why are you knitting a blanket? Vin's dark gold eyes glimmer in the swaying light. They are like a maelstrom, pools of quicksand pulling you in and you can't look away. He slowly looks up at you. After I found out about your plans, you would have no choice but to give up making the blanket. I do not wish for you to have such a regret. So allow me to finish the blanket, okay? Then I'll stay here and keep you company. When you're done, we'll go back to bed. You hug your knees and lean against me. You aren't going anywhere. Within the situation, Vin lowers his hands helplessly. You. Okay, you win. I'll stop here for today. You and Vin lay down back on the bed again. You hold onto him in a way that seems like you, it would make you feel more safe and at ease. Vin places his hand on your sets resting on his waist. He moves closer to your ear. Good night, Shikara. Can I have a good night kiss? You respond with, an, with action and turn your head to move closer to him. Your lips find nothing but air. You open your eyes in surprise and look at Vin. 
in the next moment you feel a warm and moist touch on your lips. Good night. Go to sleep. Good night. The room is dark after turning off the lights. You place your head on the pillow and close your eyes. However, it may due to the memory of touch. The itching feeling in your palm from earlier today returns. Thoughts of wind fill your mind. After a while, the feeling of sleepiness slowly takes over. Vince bedroom. The morning sunlight wakes you. The air in the room is slightly chilly and filled with the fragrance of flowers. You glance over at the slightly open windows. The transparent curtains flutter in the wind and touch your heart. As the curtains drop back down, wind comes into view. Wind's balcony. You gently push open the door to the balcony and see Vin wrapped in a fluffy blanket deep asleep beneath the windowsill. The blanket is finished. He's quietly asleep and his, his silvery hair is spread across the pure white blanket. It's such a beautiful sight. You kneel down beside Vin and looks at him. It's like he's the main character of a painting drawing you in with his attractiveness. You kiss his pale fingers. Vin is sound asleep and does not wake to your movements. He must be really tired. You place Vin's hand back into the warmth of the blanket and tuck him in. Hmm? What is this? A part is under where Vin's hand originally rested. Invitation, it writes. You pick up the card and find that it's an invitation to an auction. The time is before the date that Vin suggested we exchange gifts. And Vin has never mentioned an auction before. A sudden possibility becomes clear to you. Could it be that he had a plan to give me a present all along? Just like I did. Is that why he kept it a secret? Images enter your mind. Vin may have been holding this invitation while wrapped in the finished blanket not long ago. He might have been deep in thought under the dim starlight. I have to hurry and prepare a gift for Vin. Some cafe. After shopping all day, you purchase all the things you need for your present. You do not return to Vin's place immediately. You take a sip of coffee and continue to write on the piece of paper in front of you. A hug, a kiss, this all seems so ordinary. What can we do together that will make me even happier? You dab your pen as you begin to sing. It doesn't take long before a delicate hand appears on the side of the table and knocks on its surface. You look up to see that Vin has arrived. You subconsciously cover the things you wrote down. Just as I thought, you are here. How did you know I was here? I remember only telling you that I'm in a coffee shop in passing. From how well I know you, that is enough information. I just need to think of a cafe that you frequent. Vin elegantly sits down across from you. He takes a glance at the things in front of you. When did you wake up? Were you home the whole time? You pretend as if nothing's going on and question that Vin and question what Vin has been up to. You shift your hand and place the paper in your pocket. It doesn't seem like Vin notices. He chuckles. I went to see a friend today. I cannot tell you much about him, but I would like to hear your thoughts about the trouble he is facing. What kind of trouble? There has been an obstacle in his love life. His girlfriend claims that their relationship has become stale and boring. 
So he is pondering and worrying whether the relationship is able to continue. I see. Vin looks at you warmly and speaks with a level tone. Kira, where do you think the excitement in your relationship comes from? Um, I'm not sure what other people think, but I feel it comes from the person that you love. We raises his brows in interest after hearing your response. Take us, for example. As long as you're next to me, every moment of every day is exciting to me. Mm, it may come from introducing new things into relationship. Doing things you've never done with the person you love will definitely bring the relationship to new places. Vin murmurs and looks at you with a serious expression. If you have seen all there is to see in the world, would you consider that to be the end of the relationship? Hmm, no, not really. At least for me, it wouldn't be. New things don't only apply to physical to the physical world, but to time as well. It's like a person will never be able to step into the same river for the first time again because it's with you every moment feels like a new experience. Vin gazes at you even deeper after hearing your response. A satisfied smile appears on his face. Being loved like this by you is such an honor. Well then, I suppose I will need to reciprocate with a greater response. Reciprocate? You will find out soon. There is a mysterious look in his in Vin's eyes. With your own suspicions already in place, you don't continue to pursue the question. Vin's attic. Soon the last day of the holiday arrives. After dinner, you and Vin head to the attic together for the final reveal. The two of you remove the stockings hanging above the fireplace. There are two presents inside. Can I be selfish and decide who gets to open their present first? Of course, who would you like to open the present first? Vin answers with action and begins to open the present you prepared for him. This is... He takes out a card from the box and gently reads the words on it. Cooking card. Eating well becomes even more important when life gets busy. Vin slowly takes out the remaining cards from the box and reads the words on them with care. He then looks up at you. The candlelight reflects ever so brightly of his eyes. These are wishing cards. When you want a wish on a card to come true, you can summon me and I will fulfill it for you. There are also blank cards at the bottom. If there is a wish you would like to make that I don't know about, you can write it down. And I'll do everything I can to make it come true. I hope life will be full of surprises, just like you see during the parade. Are you not afraid that I will make a wish that crosses the line and makes you uncomfortable? Vin speaks with a gentle and quiet voice. If you actually do end up doing that, I would be even more happier. From the day we met, you've always been considerate of how I feel. It's fun if you put yourself first sometimes. Don't mind if I do then. Vin moves in and leaves a warm kiss on your lips. I will cherish it dearly. Vin carefully puts the cards away and the smile on the edge of his lips lingers. Then, it's my turn. Wait, there is something we have to do before you open it. Vin's attic. Vin turns around and leaves the attic. He returns momentarily. 
Moments of the past of peace in your mind as you see the blanket in his arms. You are reminded of the day Vin fell asleep and you kiss his fingers. The images in your memory are blurred as if they're an illusion. However, you are moved all the same like a fresh sprout uncontrollably breaking through the soil. Vin begins to speak as you stare quietly at him. Even though you have already seen it, I still think it should be present at this moment. Your eyes are drawn to the shining white texture in front of you. You move closer to Vin and uncomfortably begin to caress the soft blanket. I saw it covering you the morning you fell asleep on the balcony. Yes, it is very warm. Vin suddenly moves closer to you and speaks with a chuckling tone. But it would be a waste if I were the only one to experience its warmth. The white blanket is suddenly flung into the air as it blocks your sight like a swan shredding its wings. You look up as the feather slowly descends, shrouding you in its elegance. Your eyes fixate on Vince's silk hair shining in the candlelight. You are now in the web he has knit. You are in his grasp. Now, you can open it. Vin places the gift wrap box in front of you. You open the box to find the holiday stockings from the restaurant that day. They were the beginning of everything and they are fitted to be here at this moment somehow. Untie it. Okay. You feel as if you've lost the ability to think while being inside Vin's embrace. You clumsily reach out your hands to untie the strings on the stockings. Unfortunately, your hands are just as lost as your thoughts, unable to, tie, to untie the knot. Vin reaches over to help. The candlelight sways and the fragrance of wine freshens the air. However, neither is as enticing as the entwined red strings before you. You and Vin are both pleased at the same time. Neither of you continue to move. You look into Vin's eyes with the turbulent emotions, wanting but unable to break free. Vin glances at the red string as his hands hold out to grab your wrist. The red string sways like the candlelight. A day of miracles. Can I make my wish right here, right now? Of course. I'll make anything you wish come true. I wish that what we have now can continue to move through time and reach a future that we cannot foresee. And in that future, Vin does not continue. He displays his last stress through action. He moves closer to you and kisses you gently on the cheek. I will be as close as I am to you now. Forever. How will you make that wish come true? Vin questions you with a gentle whisper and a slightly frustrated expression on his face. The wish that you are supposed to feel peace seems to be troubling him. It's a little difficult to make that wish come true. However, you caress the hair that has fallen to the side of his ear and place your cheek next to his. The two of you are entwined by the red string. With this red string as a witness, I hope it travels forward in time and binds our feet together. For all of our years, we will never be apart. Vin chuckles slightly as such a simple promise fulfills such a grand wish. I thought that after we became family, I would have a simple kind of love, the kind that I can enjoy slowly and peacefully. However, at this moment, I feel like I have always been lifted up by your abundance of love, soaring high without a moment of dissent. He closes his eyes and lovingly leans on your shoulder while holding tightly onto the red string. For all of our years, we will never be apart. If one can understand that as eternity, Vin looks down red. The string is untied without you knowing. 
with his hand tied to the red string, Vin takes out a uniquely designed necklace. Then I will have to give to you my only eternity. Vin hangs the necklace on the red string. He gently tugs on the string and the necklace slides into your palm. A unique gem is placed in the center of the necklace. The gem is cool, but your palm and cheeks are burning. The design is... It is a globe emerald. It represents eternal love. Will you accept this gift bearing the meaning of eternal love? Vinsky is as, is as gentle as the candlelight illuminating the room and as understanding as the vast night sky outside the window. The feelings that Vin has been stirring up inside you this past couple of days can no longer be kept dormant and begin to flow. In these past few days, I've realized how deeply attracted to you I am. I can now confidently see you take a deep breath. I love you just as much as you love me, if not more. I, Vin suddenly kisses you and gently pulls onto the back of your head. As he gently pulls your chin, you can't help but open your mouth and avail yourself to him. Your and Vin's breathing becomes erratic. The familiar feeling of butterflies can be felt again. All you can do right now is wrap your arms around Vin's neck to try to soothe it. Soon, your world begins to turn. You lean inside Vin's arm as you pant and try to catch your breath. Vin, can I ask you a question? Vin gently caresses your hair and nods with a smile. Why did today have to be the day that you asked the question? That is because... Vin waves aside the necklace on your neck and kisses you where the pendant rests. I think you love me more right this very moment than you did previously. Forgive my cunningness, but since you have already given me your answer, I will not allow you to change your mind. You catch Vin's deep kiss. It gives you the courage to make the promise. My answer will never change. I was not expecting knitting clothes to be so fun. I would like to experience other crafts with you in the future. Me too. And it is fun when I'm with you. Then what shall we try during the next vacation? I want to try the DIY slime. Slime? Yeah, you know, you mix all the different ingredients together into a silicon light thing that you can squeeze and play around with. That sounds interesting. We should do that next time. That type of craft most likely have no requirement for the venue. We should do it at home. It will be more convenient that way. Do you think it would be better at my place or yours? Then let's go to your place. I want you to have the finished model. It will be a lively addition to your house. Okay, I will prepare the materials beforehand. <laughs>